Joseph Mendoz uh, with another video for virtualsheetmusic.com. Uh, so today um, I'm going to talk about something that I can't believe I have not talked about yet. Uh, it's something uh, that's pretty basic um, and that actually my wife uh, suggested that I do a video on. Uh, so here goes, it's on harmonics, how harmonics work, how best to play them, uh, the different various kinds of harmonics that we have on the cello. Um, so first of all, just to explain, for those of you who don't know or aren't familiar yet uh, with what harmonics are, harmonics are the result of the resulting sound of dividing the string into various parts and just touching the string, just barely touching the string. So, um, and, and it operates on mathematical principles that were first discovered by the great Greek mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras, actually. Um, so if you look at the string, and if you, if, you, if you see from here to here, this is the stopped uh, portion of the string. By stopped, I mean this is the vibrating portion, okay? So if you take this vibrating portion and you divide it in half, okay, so this is just a regular A, and then you divide it in half and you touch, you get one octave higher. Now if you take this spot and that spot, again, and you divide it in half, you get another octave higher if you just touch it. If you take this spot and divide it one more time in half, you get another octave, right? Now, the funny thing is, is that as you divide these octaves, the sound of them get flatter and flatter, so it actually makes it a little bit difficult to, to play these, a little bit difficult to play these harmonics in tune, especially the higher ones. But basically, the ones that can be relied upon are always the first division and then the second division. Now, there's another way to divide these. There's a way to divide the string in thirds, okay? So every third point on the string, on the stopped length, has a harmonic on it, except some of those harmonics are the same, again, because you're dividing the string in the same way. So this would be, from here to here, this would be one-third the length. And what we get is actually an octave and a fifth above what the open string is. Now, the same spot that corresponds to that is there. You see how those are the same notes that happens to be an E. Right? Okay, now we can further divide that. This gets a little tricky because they, they don't end up sounding as good. But if we further divide this one, or is it? Nope. There it is. They get tricky to play. Now, they're tricky to play because the, the, the distance uh, that you're allowed to play with the harmonic in terms of the, dis the, the, the spot that you're allowed to touch um, uh, is very, very, very narrow. You'll notice for the first harmonic that I play, I can actually kind of move the finger around, and I still get the same harmonic. The quality of the harmonic changes, but I still get the same harmonic. However, if I try to do it with this harmonic, you start to hear that there's a little bit of pitch difference, and it starts to slip in and out. Whereas this one, there's a lot of leeway. And as you go up, same thing. If we find that other corresponding harmonic here, as soon as we start to move it around, we get into problems with, with actually getting the harmonic to sound. Now, I know some of you have problems in your pieces uh, with harmonics, uh, and I have some students who have trouble with this the first time they play, um, the first time they play them. Uh, in fact, this harmonic here um, is one that shows up in a very popular piece, um, and it, um, most students, when they play it, it ends up sounding like this. Kind of like a squeak or some kind of weird sound or something. And it's because most of you, when you're playing harmonics, are pressing on the string. The harmonic gets much better and much, much more clear if you do two things. First thing being, making sure that you're not, you're not pressing the string down at all. In fact, the lighter you touch a harmonic, the more clearly it will sound. And the other thing is, it's playing close to the bridge. You can actually play almost ponticello, which means almost on the bridge, like if I were to play a regular note in that same spot, I get that kind of shrill sound. But if I play a harmonic in that same spot, and I have my finger on the right spot, then it actually intensifies and clarifies the harmonic. So if you play harmonics too close to the fingerboard, you hear they get a little bit squeaky, but as soon as I get it closer to the bridge, it gets much, much, much clearer. Now there's a whole other set of harmonics. Those are just the natural ones. And you can hear all the natural ones if you just kind of run your finger up and down the string. 
you can hear all those kinds of harmonics. Now there's other harmonics, there's what are called artificial harmonics. Now the way we create an artificial harmonic is we stop the string at some artificial point. By artificial meaning not one of the points that it's naturally stopped at, right here. So in order to do these you need to use your thumb. So this is a very advanced technique and there's two basic types. There's a touch 5 and a touch 4. Now what does that mean? If you, if you put your thumb down and then you touch a fourth above that, you notice you get an octave higher from where the thumb is down. If you touch five, you get a fifth higher. You see that? So those are the two basic ones that we use. And we can use that to move around and play scales and have all sorts of nice kind of fluty effects. And there's even one really cool effect, and we'll end the video with this, that happens at a really nifty piece uh, by George Crumb called Vox Bolognae, and it's uh, Voice of the Whale is what it's called, and it's for cello, flute, and piano. Uh, uh, I think one of the first pieces that my wife and I ever performed together. And there's a really, really nice section in that where seagulls are imitated, and I'll try to duplicate that for you right now. You can hear the seagulls. If I do it on a different string, it sounds like a lower, lower voiced seagull. So it's a really nice effect, and there's all sorts of fun things you can do with harmonics. Um, and uh, another piece, actually, to check out with really, really cool use of harmonics is uh, Capriccio by Lucas Foss, which I don't think is actually on uh, the website uh, because it's, uh, well, it's published by another publisher. But you have uh, um, uh, YouTube, there's YouTube clips of the piece uh, that really use the harmonics um, uh, in a really creative, really, really neat way. Uh, it's by the American composer Lucas Foss called Capriccio. Um, so anyway, I think that's all I have to say about harmonics. Um, if any of you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, not on YouTube, uh, but on the virtualsheetmusic.com website. Um, I've, I've had some comments saying that sort of, uh, I don't like YouTube. No, I have nothing against YouTube. <laughs> I love YouTube. I use it quite a bit myself, but I literally cannot answer those comments. So your comments will be unanswered, guaranteed, if you leave them on YouTube. Um, I can only have access and uh, answer the comments on the virtualsheetmusic.com website, which means you, of course, need to log in and leave your comment and do all that stuff. So, uh, once again, this has been Joseph Bendos for virtualsheetmusic.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.